Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Julie Montague, otherwise known as the American Viscountess. And in recent days, I have been reporting and commentating on Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II across many networks. Um, many of you have been incredibly kind and have sent me messages saying you've seen me on one network or another. And um, I think in one day I had 16 interviews, but I'll keep going and going because it's all in honor of the Queen. So today I thought I would just recap really the legacy of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Do comment down below um, during this video, after this video, of some of your favorite memories of Her Majesty the Queen. The legacy of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So much to speak about this legacy of the Queen. And many of us will remember her for different reasons that touched us personally. She really was a steadfast source of inspiration and she vowed in her speech on her 21st birthday to devote her life to the service of her people. And this was a promise which she held true despite never having expected to become queen. The first child of Albert George Windsor and Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, she was born in London in 1926 and grew up in London alongside her younger sister, Margaret. When her uncle, King Edward VIII, made the shocking decision to abdicate in 1936 because he wanted to marry the American divorcee socialite Wallace Simpson, her father became King George VI. The coronation of King George VI and the Queen Mother, as we like to call her, took place on the 12th of May, 1937. But following his untimely death in 1952, the princess, as she was known then, was called on to ascend the throne when she was only 25 years old. Crowned in 1953 at Westminster Abbey, she declared, I am sure that this, my coronation, is not the symbol of a power and a splendor that are gone, but a declaration of our hopes for the future and for the years I may, by God's grace and mercy, be given to reign and serve you as your queen. Elizabeth first met Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark in 1939 when she was only 13 years old, yet she said this was when she fell in love. Eight years later, they married at Westminster Abbey in an extraordinary ceremony where she wore a Norman Hartnell gown bought with war ration coupons as part of Britain's strict post-war measures. Its design was inspired by Botticelli's painting Primavera, signifying rebirth and growth after the Second World War. The marriage was to last more than seven decades until Prince Philip's death last year. During her reign, the Queen is estimated to have visited more than 120 countries and expanded the number of Commonwealth member states from 8 to 54. But for me, perhaps her most historic achievement for Britain was her support for the Succession to the Crown Act, which sees, after 300 years, daughters an equal right to the throne. She was also a patron of more than 600 organizations supporting causes, including wildlife conservation, education, and the arts. From the early days of television, she connected to the public, broadcasting her Christmas messages, her engagements, and royal tours. She really embraced the modern age, and in particular, sent her debut tweet in 2014, which she signed, Elizabeth R. And of course, many of us will also remember her appearance alongside James Bond in the opening ceremony of the London Olympics in 2012, with three of her beloved corgis, Willow, Holly, and Monty in tow. And who could forget the tea and sandwich scene with Paddington Bear at the Platinum Jubilee earlier this year. As an American who has married into the British aristocracy, I am fascinated by royal history 
and in particular, royal queens. I just love learning more about British history, which is why I subscribe to History Hit, who is sponsoring this week's episode. History Hit is an on-demand channel and award-winning podcast network which helps me in my research and tells the stories that shaped the world. History Hit has two new programs on royal queens, which I'm really enjoying. These are Becoming Anne Boleyn and Becoming Elizabeth. There's also a special program on Queen Elizabeth II, A Life in History. Dan Snow and Royal Historian Professor Kate Williams reflect on the early years of Elizabeth II's remarkable life and how that was shaped by her experiences before she became queen. One of the great strengths of History Hit is the huge variety of content. There are hundreds of programs, a thousand plus podcast episodes, and 5,000 history-related travel articles. And every week, they launch 15 new podcast episodes and two new programs. I've set up a special code for you to get 50% off the first three months when you use the code American Viscountess. Link here and down below. History Hit is a wonderful resource for anyone like me who wants to learn more about the past. And I'm sure you'll enjoy the channel and podcast episodes as much as I do. The queen will additionally be remembered for her bright style. Those purples, greens, periwinkles, yellows, and fuchsias. And she said that it made her easier to spot in large crowds. The queen really is the most depicted monarch in history, with Cecil Beaton and Andy Warhol among the many influential artists to have taken her portrait. And of course, there's television with Helen Mirren, and Olivia Coleman, just two of the leading actresses who have played her on screen. Here is a look at Queen Elizabeth's life in numbers. With 70 years on the throne, Queen Elizabeth had four children, eight grandchildren, and 12 great-grandchildren. She saw 15 UK prime ministers during her reign, as well as 14 US presidents in office. Zero other British monarchs had served as long as her. She owned more than 30 corgis in her lifetime and sat for over 200 portraits. An inspirational, extraordinary, remarkable woman who never wavered in her duty. And she has secured a place in all of our hearts, ensuring that her legacy will endure for a very, very long time. Rest in peace, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II.